Hello everyone, this is Sirius Trivia. Welcome back to another episode of our legendary Luger campaign. We pick things up for episode 5 from turn 20 in the autumn season of 186. So as we hop back in, uh, the Mandate War is officially over. Um, with Liu Chong's attack on Dai, uh, Zhang Jiao is no more. And we have a little bit of dilemma on our hand. So on one hand, we yeah, really would sure. like to conquer more land, especially the horse pasture. But it seems like Liu Bei is ahead of us on that, and uh, we're not going to beat him to it because we can't reach it this turn. So alternatively, we can head out west and take out the bandit. We're not currently at war with him, but we can be. Uh, it's not that difficult to launch the attack on him. Um, we could maybe hope he can help us wipe out Ding Yuan right now. They're at war, but I'm guessing his main army is right here. And if he wants to come back, it'll be many, many turns. So um, we'll have to kind of decide what we want to do. But regardless, we're probably pulling our armies back a little bit. Um, we're just not going to be able to snatch that away. And if we want to continue to expand, the other problem is the only piece of land that I would really want would be Yobei Ping, because we would be able to pick up, you know, a trade port, which would be very valuable going forward. Um, aside from that, nothing really super attractive on this side. But I think maybe it's best that we go west eventually, because we want to complete our great library. Uh, we don't want to just talk about the books, we want to collect all of them. And there are books that's going to require us to uh, travel to Anding, for example, over here or to well, win the ambush battle. We can try to work that out. There's another one where we have to own a silk settlement. There we go. For Chu Tzu, we need to own silk. So we need to go west. That's kind of the logic here. And for today, we're also going to talk about two books, um, which we're both using right now, Huangdi Neijing and Nanjing. Uh, so Jing it's a very common ending you're going to see on a lot of the books. Um, both of these have that. And I think there's a couple more. Well, technically, classic of poetry should be called Shi Jing. And there got to be more than those. Ah, Book of Change should be, I mean, if you write it out in Chinese, it would be Yi Jing. And... Shanghai Jing. Uh, also, I think it's kind of replacing the word for classic. I think that's the translation that the game using, and it's probably the common one. It just means a book. It's a very uh, common term back then. And Nan Jing and Huang Di Nei Jing, as you can see from what it does, are both medical books. And we'll talk about them together, uh, both here at the start of uh, the video. Uh, let's talk about Huang Di Nei Jing first, since it's the older of the two, and Huang Di is the first emperor, uh, the yellow emperor. Now his name uh, is yellow emperor, but he was not the emperor as in the dynasty system. The first ever quote unquote emperor would be Qin Shi Huang or the first emperor of Qin forming a united dynasty. Huang Di lived during a time when, um, you know, 5,000 years ago, tribal period, think Stone Age. So he was a tribal chieftain that united the tribes around the Yellow River and is considered the founding father or the foundation of the Chinese ethnic group as a whole. But he didn't technically write the book. Uh, the book was written somewhere around um, late Qin, early uh, Western Han. It's a, like, it's a compilation of medical knowledge up to that time. And the people who compiled it decided to name it after the founding kind of figure uh, in terms of kind of a mythical figure. But this is definitely one of the most important medical books in Chinese history. There's uh, four classics of Chinese traditional mo uh, medicine, and Wang Di Neijing is one of them. Nan Jing is another one. And the other two books, one is called Ben Cao Gang Mu, which is an encyclopedia of herbs, um, basically about 365 herbs actually, and it's credited to someone called Shen Nong, who is kind of the father of like herbology uh, in Chinese history, who tasted all these herbs and recorded their effects and how to use them to create different medicine. So it's kind of a pharmaceutical book of sorts. And then the last book is um, Shanghan Zabing Lun, which is written during the Three Kingdom 
by a man named Zhang Ji or Zhang Zhongjing, who is actually in the game as a generic、um, strategist. He was the administrator of Changsha, but he was very practiced as a medical professional, and he wrote down a medical book、uh, passing on to the future. And those four books are considered the classic of、um, Chinese medicine, at least the traditional medicine. So from Three Kingdoms on, if you're practicing medicine in China,、uh, you pretty much have to read these four books. And Huang Di Nei Jing、uh, comes in two volumes. First volume is a very traditional style,、um, which is a ask type of style, similar to WebMD nowadays, right?、Uh, it will come in the format of someone asking about a symptom, and it will have a paragraph afterward telling about what the symptom could mean, how you would treat it, what you might look for, and that's one of the volume. And the second volume is more about、uh, the structure of the body,、um, the flow of Um, what would be called Jing Mai、uh, in Chinese? It's kind of hard to actually translate it. So traditional Chinese medicine, you understand the flow of energy in the body, and acupuncture is built on that. And the second volume used to be called、uh, Zhen Jing, which is the classic of the needle,、uh, which is the foundations for acupuncture.、Uh, so kind of human body structure, where you might want to apply the needles、uh, to heal certain spots. So that's the content of Huang Di Nei Jing. It also has a little bit about encyclopedia of different herbs,、uh, but not as much as、uh, Ben Cao Gang Mu. And then Nan Jing,、uh, Jing already said, just means a classic work, a book. And Nan、uh, here means difficulties. And this entire book comes in the format of 81 questions, and each question represents one Nan or one difficulty, and it's basically a description of a symptom. So it will be a question and answer format for the entire book. You'll ask what this symptom uh, is, uh, describe it. You know, maybe、uh, this person's heartbeat is irregular, and then it will have a page or multiple pages covering what that symptom could mean, how you would、uh, test it farther, how you would treat it, and that's the structure of the entire book. So these two are both medical books, and that's why you see the replenishment bonus on them. So that's quite neat、uh, in terms of how they. Uh, structure that,、um, and that's pretty much it for today in terms of books. Let's get back to playing the game. We're gonna transition ourselves into、uh, invading the West. So let's see. We could approach、hmm, Yemen from the north, or we can choke them off here in case they attack us. This will be faster. We、we'll、have to end the turn kind of in ambush mode, just because we don't want them to hit us in ambush. Hmm, Ding Yuan's existence is actually really annoying. All right, we're gonna go here. There's a road here. We'll move over. We also meant to adopt her, or、we'll、hire her and adopt her and use her as marriage bait to get Lu Bu. That's our goal here. So she's. Not spectacular at all, but the good news is she is not a spy because she's willing to spy for us. So I can feel pretty safe adopting her. And right away, we adopt, and we go propose marriage. Now I'm sure we can probably grab a lot of different marriages. Uh, from a lot of factions, because everyone apparently is missing girls. Like we can grab Luo Jun if we want, and then fix the divorce, and then we can steal the character. So we could technically inflate our court quite effectively right now if we had, you know, a better treasury situation. We're kind of poor. That's one big problem we have right now. So we might want to reconsider a lot of things. I,、hmm. I think I'll let him keep the retinue. The retinue is not bad. It works well on him. So I'm not gonna fix it there. I I do want Luo Jun. So we might we might oh Cao Ren's also available. Just came of age. Just joined them. Seventeen. So Cao Ren's a great heir. Zhong Zhuo's brother. He'll be adopted. Someone Zhong Xuan, our classmate. 
it was very old as well, but then again, we can't judge because we also adopted someone who's ancient. His son's not of age yet. He adopted someone too. Tao De, Tao Tao's younger brother. He died alongside the father when Tao Tian killed them. Oh, okay. This is this is one. There's this administrator who died during the Ultimate Rebellion's sons. This is our target, right? Like the second we get him, we're gonna have to find a way to keep him happy. I don't know what his level is, but um, yeah, we're gonna have to just get this deal through. Oh, 15.1. We love to see that. So he's very happy to give us Rebu, mainly because we're very strong. He's very weak. Okay, well, he's he's not rich. He only has a iron mine, so. Does he have cash on hand? Hmm. Okay, then I'll take the Perturn, actually. Does he have any extra items? No, not quite. He can't trade territory, he only has one piece of land. So... That's no good. Alright, we'll take this deal. Let's see how unhappy Liu Bu is in our faction. Six points, not zero. Okay, desire for higher office is the biggest problem. Uh, we can reduce most of it by giving him the chancellor position. We're gonna have to hope to reroll his trait in the future as well. He got the marriage fondness. So the difficult thing here is I would like to use her as marriage bait to grab us Taurin as well. And Taurin would probably be a slightly better choice of heir than say Lu Bu. Just because of authority differences. So recruitment for a shock cavalry discount. That's not bad. Tarim would be better just for satisfaction. Hmm. It would be cheaper to give him a title. Yes, I think it actually would be, because he's currently family. He's not going to stay family, though. We're going to be poor. Give him more damage, give him more health. I think more health probably suits him better. Yeah, let's do that. And that should erase, I'm guessing, 32 points next turn, in terms of the desire for higher office. I don't know how he will feel about the divorce on the same turn. Minus 15, okay. Drop to zero, negative 14 here. Divorce from ruling family. So I can't wait for the Quill Dragon to kick in. So I'm gonna have to give him this job. Making him extremely high salaried, but that's probably the only way we can keep him. Well, then he doesn't need the title. Yeah, if we're going to go down this rate, then he didn't need the title. Well, he's not going to get the title. I know, I know, it's going to hurt. Like, overall, not the right order of doing things, but it's fine. He kept the fondness from the marriage, which is lovely. 15 points always there. The recently hired would go away, but then recently demoted would also go away. Uh, divorce from ruling family will go away in a few years, I think, so... Let's just say the fondness balanced out the divorce, and now he's, he's okay. Um, so, he's, he's with us. And we can get another marriage out of the way. Tao Tao. Tao Meng Du. Where are you? Wait, where are you? Oh, wow, he's so, uh, well, he's so up there. See, you guys look like you can be happily married, so... I'm gonna let you guys stay married. Tosa is also much richer. Okay, that's not bad. Good 
So what's his satisfaction? 33. Hmm. Doesn't like the adoptive sibling. See, I'm ready for him to leave our faction. That's like my expectations here. Oh, Tarn's not here yet. Is it? Is it? Oh no, he just because I maybe I need to come back here. Okay, it's not being shown here, but he's he's right here. All right, so he didn't have any items on him. That's okay. If I make him air, we get six points here. Oh, he doesn't give much, and his skill tree's on the wrong side, really, for all the bonuses. Okay, so maybe we don't need to make him air. I'm happy just to grab him, and then we can set up a divorce with him as well. How how unhappy is he? Oh, I hate it. I can't check right there. He is currently 73. He also got married into family, so divorce would just cancel that part out. He's only level 1. So we're going to divorce him. It's an equal treatment. You don't have to feel bad. And then we're going to go to Liu Chou. It's very nice you adopted him. Another very happy marriage. Yeah, I knew he wasn't going to be so generous. Hmm, that might be Max. Yep. We nailed it. Any items that he's not using? I doubt. Oh, oh, he actually has some items that he's not using, but I don't think I need that. Now Taran's here. Lo Jin's also here with gold, gold armor, silver weapons. Perfect. A burn officer, patience officer, a guardian of the people. Very, very good background, actually. So he would make a decent error as well. Uh, plus five satisfaction from this on top of the three point here. It's pretty good, actually. Hmm. If we make him error instead of Liu Yan, we lose the 15% to peasantry. Or we can just wait till he gets natural he would like naturally leave us and then we'll set him up because i'm not sure with our economy 10 percent to all might not be as good as 15 percent to peasantry look peasantry 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 we got ourselves a harbor and in the future uh an inn that that's about it and a little bit of industry here but it's it's a lot of peasantry so I think that's that's that. Okay, so we used all the money we kind of uh, saved up for characters. Um, ooh. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. Right, right. His salary is kind of cr crazy. He's 150. He's free. She's free. She's not happy about uh, all this stuff. It'd be funny if we just fire her <laughs> at this point. Uh, she took on our last name. Uh, she used to be, I think, Dai was her last name. But, uh, yeah. We, we could totally fire her, to be honest. We would want this boost, but not here. Like, the fervor one would have been so good when we had that fervor issue, but now it's not really an issue. Oh, she can boost industry. Hmm, she's level 4. That's why she's complaining. Where do we have a lot of peasantry? See, that's the thing. And we'll hang on to that, actually. We might just tax this place like crazy. Wait, they took away ancient capital here. I think, yeah, used to have ancient capital. No more. But it might have been changed for, for a while now, but I just haven't checked it yet. Okay, so that's fine. Yeah, I mean, with high fertility in both of these places, we could just go pure in peasantry. It's still not very lucrative. Like, this would be even more lucrative because we actually have some sort of income from the livestock farm. This is too too far north. Mm. I want to give her, Aya. I mean, I don't really want to give her anything. We could just fire her. Is it? Okay, like the only thing we can wait for right now 
I mean, there's no, there's not Talpi in the game because Talpi wasn't born this time, so he just doesn't exist in the game in the 182 start. And let's see. The good news is all the Sun kids have come of age already. We can steal one of the Emperor's sons when in like seven years. We don't have to wait for that. So until it's only ten, so we're six years away. Okay. So I think her fate is that we kick her out. We don't divorce. Right? Because if we divorce, then Lo Jin's not free anymore. We kick her out. Well, she's currently free. This is going to cause a little bit of issue, but... Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to kick her out. She's just, just not useful. So I'm just going to release from service. I don't care about the 16, 1600. I thought it was only 800. Why is she so special? Wow. Is this a level thing? Oh, it must be a level thing. Ah, uh, minus five satisfaction. The only one's only 24. All right, we keep her. Because is I mean, she's not the only one causing the below 25 debuff, so she's not making the difference here. All right, I think we're pretty happy with all the marriages deals we did, and I think we put building orders in everywhere. So assignment, back to the assignment issue. And I guess we make her work for us. She can come here and boost, you know, industry for us. There's 200 here, 60, not too bad. Let's go. Master Archer, okay. This is his uh, great archery showcase in front of Ling to stop the war between Yuan Shu and Liu Bei. Which happens in many, many years later, more than a decade. So Liu Bei also took Dai, so we, that's why we didn't go over there. He's probably gonna take the rest. I want to know where Zhang Yan's army is. If he took that, right, and then now I don't know where he is. If he's at war with them, which he is, he should be coming after them. And I wanna see that. Our, our dear student. Gao Yu, leveled up. Um, he's currently the administrator, so I guess he can get us some more food. I don't need him on the field, so that's fine. Oh, we picked up discourses on salt and iron. Hmm, we could maybe talk about this book as well. Because I think it's also in the set that the two medical book we talked about. Yeah, we might talk about it at the end of the episode. She's not happy. Hmm. A lot of people aren't happy. When are you going to leave? You know, if you're going to leave, hurry up and leave. So we can switch errors. Alright, so that's got the discount over here from this building. Public order is fine. We switch to this. Now I believe everywhere is positive, except for the ones we just captured. But that's faction support, so that will go away soon. Private workshop, complete the build here. This is questionable. Um, if we get rid of it, I think we go with inscription. It does potentially this. Once we get the reform, but even before the reform, we can get plus one seasonal deployment. Yeah, that's probably the only building I think, other than keeping the government support. But we'll keep it for now. Okay. How far are we from ranking up? 35 points. All right, let's let's continue. There's not much we can do. Loyal, disloyal. Oh, obviously. Oh, relationship though. Hmm. I'm still gonna promote loyalty though. I don't need to be best friend. Ooh. Be fun. Go master. We need you right now though. 
北宫赞，北宫博玉 brother。That's my guess. A magician, a uh, bandit character. Cordial? No, it's not useful. Yeah, we don't need anyone. I I believe he's so, okay. So he might be a spy, and I don't actually need him right now. So we'll pass on all of them. Our economy is doing okay. Oh, yellow turbans. We might fight them. Here, I'm gonna give you an item. Alright, we can pick up a reform. I think it's time to pick up the level 3 here. And then finish this wrap. The 2 away. So this means that can be upgraded. Uh, so what's the best upgrade option for us right now? Two turns, four turns, five turns, four turns, money-wise. Oh, we did this math a long time ago, but... I think in general, you want like one level, two levels of this, and then rest of this, and then you go back to that? Something like that. I mean, she's currently doing something too. Just the recently hires dying away. It's time to say goodbye to her. I'm not gonna get this, you know, 1,600 from firing her. I'm just gonna ask her to leave. That way she can even come back in the future too. I know she's on assignment, but we can put someone else in. We can do commerce? Hmm, questionable. Under 80 peasantry. Under 35. Alright, we'll take the 180 peasantry. Gets hard on some level up here. Oh, books. Let's let's do talk about. It. See, this is one. This is two, and we unlock three discourse on salt and iron. And this is oh, this is quite a nice book actually. Hold on, we have some bad stuff we can get rid of like this. Put that on. I think we just need Chu Ci to finish the set. For, uh, I don't know what the set bonus is though. I have to look that up later. Uh, but discourse on Salt and Iron. Yeah, we'll talk about that as we continue our turn here. Oh, Zhang Yan wiped them out. Perfect. Demon got wiped. Um, so, we're also going to declare war on them. I have to assume their stack is over there, which means we have to proceed very, very carefully. We need to save 20, uh, 25% sometimes around the number. Like it could be 24.6 and then we can't ambush and then we're going to be in trouble. Right, so we want him to not ambush attack us. Wow, how does he get a captain? That's interesting. Anyways. Um, he might just come out over here, which is okay too. We'll take the settlement right behind him. We'll, we'll trade settlements and do stuff like that. And I'm going to upgrade that. That's really all we're going to do. All right, so let's talk about the book. Uh, Discourse on Salt and Iron. Uh, it's not going to be terribly long. We can go super detailed about it, but the general gist is this. During the Western Han Dynasty, we talked about how Liu Xiu or Han Wu Di uh, was able to change the way the ruling philosophy from Taoist belief to a more Confucian belief. 
And the main difference there for the Taoist belief is that they believe in the invisible hand where the nature has a way and you shouldn't really mess with it. Uh, the concept can be summarized into something called Wu Wei, uh, which is do nothing. Um, it's kind of uh, something you might not come as intuitive, but the basic concept is the best way for, govern for the government is to not mess with the way society works uh, in case you disrupt it incorrectly. Uh, but he shifted from that, and at the time, Han Wudi is very well known for his conquest in the north. He's the one who kind of uh, broke the Xiongnu's um, tribe's dominance in the west, and was the one who established the Silk Road connection uh, for the Han dynasty. So to wage those wars, it's a very expensive effort. So he pushed for a series of economic reforms where the government kind of nationalize certain industries in particularly salt and iron as both of those you know industries have a lot of military use as well as civilian use but um, they're also very lucrative industries also wine making and alcohol consumption so basically nationalize um, alcohol salt iron industries and by nationalizing it doesn't mean like the government take control of the industry themselves but you have to sell through a licensed government seller. So you can't have private deals dealing in salt, dealing in iron, or dealing in alcohol. This way, the government ensures that they take the profit from these uh, trades. And that's a way for Hanwudi to finance his war. He also implemented a bunch of methods that kind of encouraged civilians to donate to the government. You can think of them as modern day versions of war bonds, which is very common. Technically, war bonds are just ways the government asks you to donate to the government during wartime. And it's not exactly a tax, but bonds obviously promise a future payment. Um, the way that he set it up is basically a donation uh, for some of the wealthy people to uh, donate to the emperor in order to finance these wars out west. Uh, but for those first 20 years, the war went very well. The Silk Road was established, the Han at that point, you know, reach its peak in terms of land, influence, wealth. Uh, but obviously, nationalizing these major industries creates another issue where corruption takes over because you're handing the power of the final transaction to certain key government groups, the groups responsible to trade these uh, resources or commodities. And it caused a lot of bloating uh, in these departments where the official who is in charge of, you know, quote unquote, you know, doing all the deals, pocketed a lot of the money themselves, and you created this wealth gap in society where you have these ultra-rich landlords who made their wealth through their government connections with these enterprises and government officials themselves buying up tons of land and kicking out, you know, a lot of farmers who now had no way to kind of make a living because it's largely an agricultural society. Um, and 20 years close to Han Wudi's death, he realized, you know, this is going to cause a problem and he pushed for a bunch of counter reforms to kind of fix things and he even wrote a letter uh, saying that he made a mistake which is not often something emperors do um, but he eventually died of old age and his son took over and when his son took over Han Wudi left two uh, regents uh, Huo Guang being one of them um, and um, what they did was they had the officials the regents had this huge debate in the court about the future of these nationalized enterprises and the debate itself was written down in like a memo or basically have a scribe copying down that debate and the summary of this meeting was written down to this book the discourse on salt and iron and the result of this first meeting was kind of the loosening of a couple industry like alcohol was loosened where it's now privatized sellers again and certain dealers of salt within uh Guangzhou, so basically like within like the inner central areas were loosened um it wasn't a complete revolution and it's the book is not important because of the result the book is important because it's a debate between privatization of economies and nationalization of economies which is this constant debate even within china today um, there's obvious advantages to both sides and disadvantages to both sides. Like with most policies or institutions or even philosophies, there is not one perfect one, right? There are strengths and weaknesses within both um, 
camps and this type of debate uh, was just the fact that they had this debate and they recorded it down and the influence it had on future generations on this debate is what makes this book more important rather than saying how it influenced the Western Han. Obviously, after Han Wudi, the Han is entering into a period of decline, mainly due to his policies. Like the amount of wealth he got from nationalizing uh, did help him push the dynasty to its peak, but also left a lot of issues in terms of the management, supervisation of these management and the power, you know, and how power corrupts, you know, causes this gradual decline in terms of the structural weakness of these nationalized institutions. You know, when you're in the right hands, it can do great things, you know, expand borders, uh, win wars, but eventually it, it causes other issues that will lead to rebellions, which was happening near the end of his reign. So, yep, that's kind of the book, and uh, we can continue here. Oh, <laughs> Koron got his land, and he got called Qi right off the bat. Well, that's very interesting. And he, he got, you know, because you left the Empire before the Empire dissolved, the Empire is going to hate you. Are, are we, are we going to be dragging? I guess we're not. The Emperor didn't ask everyone to go to war with him. Wow, 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 Chengu. Okay, so that's that's the one that's obviously most obvious to grab. Looks like he has some sort of armor. I'm just looking at traits. Someone has to be burned, right? So many generals. I know Chengul is not that smart. Ah, so close, right. No. There we go. There's one. Level 5, though. How do we keep him happy? Uh, but we'll grab him for sure. I mean, we used him in our Gong um, Sun campaign as well. So, we're going to be able to use him here as well. Duan Wei. Duan Wei and Chen Gong. Two more hires. Uh, our salary situation just getting worse. But our ambush paid off as we caught them raiding on this side. Um, I think the safest move is actually just ignore them. Because if we go after them, they're going to run, and then we're going to have to kind of ambush, and they can still go. Because we, we don't want him to engage us ever in the open field. So we just cut him off. If he wants to take that, we'll go after that afterward. Um, this will probably be the easiest time to catch this up. I think... I think we have to fight this just to keep things minimum. Uh, maybe, maybe it won't be so bad. Three. Okay, that's, that's totally acceptable. I mean, he lost most of the health, that's, that's even more acceptable. Level 1. Okay, uh, so maybe we should pick up Shaft Mining first? Wow. Another reason to make him heir. Except for he got the divorce. We could adopt him. Not that expensive. That's like... But, uh, but to be honest, that might be the only... Like, Li Bu being heir is not that bad, actually. If we can reroll this into something useful, we could take advantage of the Shock Cavalry bonuses. We have a bunch of good Shock Cavalries. What's his retinue like? Can I summon him? Okay, one heavy C down, 400, 440. <laughs> uh, that's upkeep. That's not even summoning cost. Um, I mean... Man, that's pricey. Okay, we're gonna get rid of this guy. Help us out a little. We'll keep this because it's unique and we can't recruit it again. Anyone like him? Chenggong? Chenggong can get... Oh, even Chenggong? Uh, even Chenggong doesn't like him. Lord Jun can work with him, but just don't have enough money to summon him. Strategist wise, nobody. There's a few, and particularly him, but I don't trust him. Oh, because he's also feared, I think. So I only have 2,000 left, and I want to recruit two people. So we're going to recruit two people and that that's all we can do. Does he have a former employer? 
he might be a spy. Yeah, I think he's a spy. This is rough. I mean, he's not that strong, to be fair. Um, so I'm not gonna cry about it. We can do double burned officers with him. Lots of cavalry, lots of unique units. Oh, right, he's also rank 5. He's incredibly hard to keep happy. Um... Hmm, how, how negative are we? Oh, we're at zero exact. Okay, so you can pick up one of these, I think. Let's see what we can do. Man, we're just so poor. Immune to scaring is kind of pointless. I think just giving him a little bit more health might be the best thing here. 200 increase. I mean, we can do the 100 cheap version. But that's not going to last as long. This is probably better. Because he's so high level that the desire is going to be like worth a lot. Yeah, this should be fine. It should be 24 point more next turn. Well, recently high. 20 point more. So he, he'll be okay. Oh, our income situation just getting worse. But we should be able to hold down the fort against them. Like, even if they come fight, I feel confident we'll win this. Oh, we got this. That's a huge retinue. Okay, we don't have any money left to build stuff. Nor are there any building slots to build stuff. Okay, we're good. Let's uh, let's continue. Unfortunately, we cannot pick up Chenggong, but that's okay. Give and take. No one's going to leave us, right? Right. Alright, Zhang Yan's going for it. Uh, he's going to give it a shot. He has less men than us and also worse generals. Uh, I mean, but the AI think they have a shot, so we're gonna go for it. Let's go do Bu's first battle for us. Alrighty, so I think we just have them set up pretty far back and let Lu Bu do most of the damage. Seventh cavalry, not not maybe he can hammer an envoy for us a little bit. Be the hammer, be a very tiny hammer, but anyone. Nope, smart. Mm, we're gonna aim for the troops. I mean, he's riding towards us. Do you want to fight? Two free hits. With a sky piercer, giant, you gotta do your math correctly. You gotta, you gotta do something. Three free hits. Use your cavalry. Use your army. No, I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to stop and then switch blows. I just want to keep charging him for free hits. Or five. <laughs> Ah, those are not hits. I mean, I haven't got scratched it. Does he have any abilities? Oh, Xu Yu? Oh, the cavalry's coming on us. Um, that's why we saved our smash. So once they do tangle up with us... I could outrun it. I'm faster than him. Especially if I have a charge target. Oh, oh, stay, 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 stay. Smash. No, don't charge out. Don't charge out. Okay, we're gonna wait for good timing when the cavalry's like on us. This is okay. Yeah, I take that. They don't have any range units with them, which is kind of interesting. He'll bounce back. 
Oh, you have a bow. How cute. Where are you going? Yes. Versus him, you can stop. You don't have to charge. Just, just whack him. Our ability is not back yet. He's giving us the plus five cooldown, so that's a problem. Okay, I'm not going to kill him. Because I think they have a, a friend relationship. Show up. No, do not get dismounted. But go after their strongest unit. Spread out. I'm trying to prevent any sort of friendly fire. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We don't want to get surrounded by them. Right, show up. Charge. Shoot at them. Will help. Target the weakest one first, because you want to chain route the enemy. So don't go for their strongest unit. And then once one start routing, you go for the next one and let that morale just carry you. Did we get the enemy cavalry? Okay. They're working on them. Chase. I go after him. It's over. He's just unbreakable. Shoot at the ones bouncing back. Make sure he doesn't bounce back. Wait here. Focus on that. Smash. Everyone on him. Alright, quit. It's over. He just has to die. Oh, okay, it's fine. Kill the garrison. We have 25% replenishment on them. Got him. Alright, nice win. Don't feel bad. This is very historical. Liu Bu was a mercenary for Ren Shao fighting Zhang Yan and whooped him. But then he stopped listening to Ren Shao. Ooh! Release. There's a chance we can get him, so we'll try to release him. Chiu got... I think he died. No? He has, res he has one resiliency. Okay. There's a chance he could, he, he could die. Uh, am I worried about them? Not really. I don't need to wipe this army out. They can't do much. Uh, if they come back over here... Alright, I'm not going to worry about them. I'm going this way. You're going to get a buddy. Who is not going to keep any of these units. 
He's rank 3. Um, once we have cash, he's going to get a full retinue of our elite spear unit. And we don't have any more cash, so we're going to have to take this. Yeah, and just delegate this, get the army off the field. And he's knocked out, so we don't have to pay the upkeep this turn. This is a really tough call. Like, see down cavalry. I don't think I can check on him. Like, I think our cavalry is better. 62, 53 armor, 226 charge, 38, 37. Okay, and then we look at his. Right, I think ours is a little bit less charge. I know that. But the damage is better and we get splash attack. And the charge might be not as far off because when Lu Bu recruits it, the Lu Bu stats, the the you know the extra Vanguard one that boosts a little bit of charge will be applied. And we get better morale, evasion, better armor piercing damage. I think it's just yeah, yeah. I think in that case we just get rid of this. And we don't have to worry about it. And our upkeep is what, 340? Yeah, so his is 440. It's, it's too much for about the same quality of unit. Uh, who can work with them? Yeah, we can probably set them up like this, get them one strategist here. They do need a strategist, I think. Even though they might not get along, it's still probably the best. They don't have reach yet, but we should get there soon. Hmm. We'll follow. Oh, would they night battle us? Well, that's suicide. We'll kill them. Yeah, if they want to fight us, we can kill them. Even if they night battle us. We got a clay rat. Uh, don't really care. I think it's because some of the deals timed out is why we... Ma Tung. He's so small right now that I don't think we're going to have to worry about him for a while. Mm. I'll take that for twenty two extra. Um, any Okay. Yeah, we're gonna have to use these to keep our economy afloat for a little bit. How much cash does he have on hand? Oh, wow. Okay. Okay, maybe, maybe not that much. I mean, still more. Alright, 3.3 .3 is probably worth asking Han Sui. Uh, he's someone who we might fight in the future, but we have a non-aggression with him already, so it's going to be something cancelled down the line anyways. 3.3... .3. Okay, so for him it's per turn, and there's a 4.1, Ying Shao, in Luan. Don't have to worry about him that much. Okay, this is definitely going to be a cash payment. Oh, he saved up so much. Uh, maybe 1,200? Wow, actually pretty close. I was daydreaming for a while. Thank you. And Alf R7 trade deals, Liu Yu's trade deal is cancelled because he no longer hold any port. Okay, so how long has our trade deal been? Can I cancel it with you? Because I'm sure there's other people I can trade with. Alright, 
Okay, it's been longer than five turns, so it's fine. No untrustworthiness there. 441, 416, 524, no bay. Okay. Our pupil. We taught him everything he knows. Actually, I don't know if I should be proud of that or not. Yeah, he doesn't have much saved up, so... Wow. Balance. We'll take per turn, then. I, I prefer per turn. Okay, so that keeps our economy going. And let's see... Sure, we're not going to wait for shaft mining, we're just going to upgrade it. And that should be it. Let's continue. Alright, that army disappeared. Engineer... Hmm. Well, wise is also a very interesting trait because it gives the satisfaction in local county. I don't think we'll be recruiting anyone just to do that. Um, let's see. I think we want to upgrade this. Could be an ambush, but given the size of the army that we saw, I'm not concerned. I will go north. Ah. Right, so given the size of the armies that we see here. Oh, they, they divided themselves up too much. So I'm not going to be worried there. 50% movement. I can't reach them, but I can go... Do we want to stay in our own territory? We could, in case you want to come back and raid, we pick on him and wipe him out. That would be pretty good. If we go forward, the advantage is that we can eventually get to here, but then we have to go through him. Are we worried that we'll get picked off by these armies with Lu Bu? I don't think so. Yeah, plus he's going to hold the zone, but they can't just walk by him. Engineering, it's a lot of stats. Here, you take this stat. Actually, you take this, and you take this. I just want the stat. I don't care about the effect. Uh, yeah, the satisfaction is difficult for us to take care of, unless we somehow luck into a um, philosopher or something like that. Anyways, we're good. Let's continue. Alright, so we got ambushed. Right, the force comes back, attack us, they ambush us. It's fine. We're prepared for this. Let's fight. Leave Riding in the snow. Waiting to get charged. Anyone want to charge us? Are they still deploying? Why is this taking so long? Are they gonna let us walk to the- oh there we go. Like, what are they doing? Did he use ability? I think he, he aired ability right there. Alright, it's no dueling. Right, I'm gonna see everyone. And... He's going to loop this way. I'll, I'll blunt the charge. I'll go after that. We'll just use it. Well, you might die. The possibility of fighting all these cavalry off. But we boost our hope here. Come back. Never mind, I think it's over. She's not unbreakable either. Kill the troops. I mean, this was always going to be a silly battle.
。上吧，尽可做得更好。记住，你面对的是何人吧？诛灭敌军，鼓起勇气，挺住。We just need her to route. There you go. That's one whack. Stay on her. Just, just keep whacking her. Guess she chose death. Yep. Minus seventy-one. You still want to charge? Kill him. I'll let him run away. There we go. Alrighty. So the hero victory should also boost our satisfaction, which will keep this army relatively happy for a little bit. Got to armor, murder both of the generals, take the money. All right, so I think we'll quickly take Oh Hua Xiong, the fierce beast. So we will pick him up, I guess, just for collection's sake. Oh, possibly a spy. I mean, he's not that special. I guess I could live without him. He is in the game. Ah, we got Huang Shigong's three strategies. Okay, so I think we can just let's just end things here. We'll pick it up and we'll wipe out, you know, Zhang Yan's faction. Take up the entirety of Taiyuan. This will be our main money-making center going forward, and uh, we're gonna eventually get into a war with Dong Zhuo once he decides. Well, I mean, I'm waiting for the Empire to break up, um, or maybe it won't break up. It's not a guarantee that it will break up, but if it does break up, then we can see Dong Zhuo with his event chain. But we'll set up our defenses here in Taiyuan to counteract him. Um, we give up on expanding that way. Liu Bei is gonna take all these land. They'll use on the back foot. And lucky Liu Bei is going to have quite big territory here. That's fine. We're moving west. We need to go west anyways. We need to get into Anding. So that's another goal we have. Maybe we'll pass through his territory. We can maybe trade for them. That's another way we can do it. Um, we can just think outside the box or something. So hopefully you guys enjoy this. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye.